Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at TP-Link EAP265 HD access point for high density environments. I wanna thank TP-Link for sending me this, but they did not pay me to do this video and all the thoughts are my own. If you'd like to hire us for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You could find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put a link in the description below. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to see what comes in the box with the EAP 265 HD, and then we'll go over some of the specs. So here's everything that comes with the TP-Link EAP 265 HD. The first thing we have is our access point, and we could see the TP-Link branding on the top. On the front here, we have an LED, which would show us if it's adopted into our controller or not. And then on the back, we have these little pieces that would be for our mounting bracket. On the inside, we have a reset button and two one gigabit ethernet ports and one supports PoE. It also comes with a PoE injector if you don't have a PoE switch. We have our mounting bracket, some anchors and screws, and then some other hardware for mounting. Lastly, it comes with a quick installation guide for Wi-Fi access point. Now we've seen what comes in the box, let's go over the, some of the specs for the EAP265 HD. We get a simultaneous 450 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz, and on the 5 gigahertz we get 1300 megabits per second. This is a high density access point which gives us multi-user, multi-in, multi-out, as well as load balancing. This access point integrates with our Amada controller and we'll be using the OC200 hardware controller. If you have multiple access points, it does seamless roaming and it's powered by 802.3AF or AT and it does come with a power injector. From their marketing material, it says that we could have 500 plus devices connected to this access point. In my testing, I just had a few connected throughout a week and I didn't have any issues at all. It seemed very stable. So now let's get into my Amata controller and then get this access point adopted, see some of the settings on the access point, and then we'll create a network and a wireless network and then do some speed tests and iPerf tests. So here we could see our access point ready to be adopted into our controller. I'm gonna click on the access point and then we're gonna say adopt. One thing I didn't mention was the price of this access point. It is $129 US MSRP. This is gonna take a little bit of time to provision and get into our controller. And once it's back, we'll look at some of the settings. Now the access point is adopted into our controller and we could see the device name, which is just the MAC address of the access point. We could see the IP address that it's gotten from DHCP and the status that it's connected. We could also see the model number, which is the EAP 265 HD Canada and the version is 1.0. We could also see the firmware version, which is 5.0.1, and we could see the uptime of the access point. If we click on this little button right here, this is gonna locate the access point, which will flash the LED on and off, and we could also reboot the access point. If we click on the access point, we're gonna see a bunch of statistics. So on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz, it's showing us our utilization. Right now on the 2.4 gigahertz, we're showing that it is 51% utilized. I have quite a few access points in this room, so we may get some interference with these channels. And then under the 5 gigahertz, we're only seeing it being used at 2%. Under details, it pretty much shows us all the same things that was in the dashboard and then adds the CPU utilization and the memory utilization. If we click on LAN, we could see the RX packets, the RX drop packets, the TX packets, the TX drop packets, the RX bytes, RX errors, TX bytes, and TX errors. And then we could look at our uplink to see where the wired connection goes to. So we could see here that it's uplinking to this MAC address. I don't have a name for it, but this is just one of my TP-Link switches. And it's going at full duplex and the negotiated speed is 1000 megabits per second. If we look under radios, it's just gonna give us a bunch of statistics for our 2.4 and our five gigahertz radios. We could take a look at our client list. Right now, I don't have anybody connected to this wireless access point, so we have no entries in the table. And then we could look at mesh. This access point does support meshing, but we don't have another access point meshing to it. If we look under config, we could change the access point name and I'll call it EAP HD. And then we could change the LED. By default, it uses the site settings, but we could turn it on or off. 
we take a look at our IP settings, we have it set to DHCP, but we could set it to a static IP address, and it does have a fallback IP, which is enabled. Under our radios, this is where we could do a bit of configuration. So under the 2.4 gigahertz, under the channel width, it's either going to use a 20 or 40 megahertz. If we only want to use one of those channel widths specifically, we could specify that. And then the channel is set to auto and the power is set to high. And you may want to turn this down if you're noticing interference. On the 5 megahertz, it's the same thing. We have the channel with the 20, 40, or 80 megahertz, auto channel, and then high power. I'm going to leave it all on default for the purpose of this video. If we look at WLAN groups, you can see that we have a couple Wi-Fi SSIDs already created, and we're going to create one and then test it out. Under services, we could enable the management VLAN and specify which VLAN we want to use, and we could also set SNMP. Under advanced, we have some load balancing options, maximum associated clients and the RSSI threshold. And then we have some other quality of service options. Under managed device, this is where we could do custom firmware upgrades. We could move this device to a different site and we could force provision or forget the access point from the controller. Under tools, we could run an RF scan and this will give us the ability to choose the proper channel that is being least utilized. And then under statistics, we have our CPU memory monitor. We have our channel utilization. We have drop packets and retried packets. Now let's go ahead and create a network and a wireless network. So what we need to do, we need to go down to the settings wheel, click on wired and then click on LAN. And here we're gonna create a new network. So we'll create new LAN. And I'll call this HD test. And it's going to be an interface and we're going to select our LAN interface. So this is the LAN interface from the router going to my switch acting as a trunk. We're going to give it a VLAN of 100 and then I'll give it a gateway subnet of 192.168.100.1/24 and then we'll update the DHCP range. We're going to leave everything else at default and then press save. Now we need to create a wireless network, so we'll click on wireless networks. Here we're going to create new wireless network and then we'll call this HD test and we're going to have both bands selected. So the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz, if you didn't want them both, you could just deselect them. We could also specify a guest network, but we won't be doing that for this video. Under security, we're going to use WPA personal and I'm going to put the password at test1234 and then we're going to want to click on advanced. Here we're going to specify which VLAN to use, so we're going to enable it, and then we're going to put VLAN 100. We have a bunch of different options. We have a WLAN schedule, 802.11 rate control, and MAC filter, but we're going to leave that all on default and then press apply. Now I'm going to do some speed tests. We'll do one in this office, one on my main floor, and then one in the basement, and we'll also do iPerf tests. My computer will be acting as the iPerf server, and then we'll be using my iPhone 11 to do these tests. The internet coming into this router is 1000 megabits per second by about 50 upload. Now we've completed the speed test and the iPerf tests. Let's take a look. The access point was set on auto and when I was doing the iPerf test I was doing it with five streams. So for the speed test in my office we were getting 544 megabits per second download and 54.9 upload which is pretty good. When we went to the main level of my house we were getting 161 down and 54.6 up which dropped quite a bit just by going down from one floor. And then in the basement we were getting 129 down and 44.9 up, which is still pretty good. You could run a lot off of those speeds. For the iPerf test in my office, I was getting 561 down and 331 up. In the main floor, I was getting 320 down and 176 up. And then in the basement, we were getting 276 down and 75 up. So I think it's a pretty decent access point. If you had a few of these in your home or business, I believe it would work well. I wasn't able to test it with hundreds of devices to see how well it does in high density, but I'm sure it would perform fine. If you guys have any questions about this access point, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.